Welcome to the 77th edition of the Journal's That Was the Week That Was show, or what's happened in the Highlands area this week. Let's get started. Jeremiah Bradshaw was arrested and charged last Saturday with a second degree murder of Christopher Bruffman. Since he used a 38 caliber handgun for the deed, he also faces felony weapons charges. Hall's drive-in supporters reported that another $150,000 was needed to help the organization by the land it uses for its shows. To date, more than $200,000 has been raised. Go to AlleghenyJournal.com right now for many donation details. Michael Wolf of Clifton Forge found himself in the regional clink once again but this time on very serious charges, including felony eluding, reckless driving, and additional offenses related to the death of moped operator Randall Tinsley of Lomore. But that's not all. He also is facing serious domestic violence and other serious traffic-related charges recently leveled by the Virginia State Police. West Rock Corporation made yet another generous local donation, this time to the street scene event going on in Covington on Saturday. James Bradshaw of Allegheny County was arrested and charged for a malicious wounding using a baseball bat on Dustin Posey after an altercation at the Jackson River Sports Complex. Witnesses and others have told the journal that the altercation was initiated by another party who to date remains uncharged and they've wondered why. Covington City Public Schools HR Director Darlene Lambert told the Covington School Board that a plan is moving forward to assure city school personnel will maintain their accumulated sick days. Covington Superintendent of Schools, Melinda Sneed Johnson, laid out a detailed return to school safety plan on Monday, which did not include a requirement for students to wear masks all day. And then on Thursday, Governor Northam signed an order requiring masks in all K-12 schools. Several Covington residents turned out on Monday at the Covington School Board meeting to strongly oppose some proposed Virginia Department of Education policies, like those for masks and on transgender issues. All were critical. Timmons Group engineers showed up Tuesday night at the Covington City Council to propose Route 220 safety improvements and noted that the city's bridges were in pretty good shape. This firm is also working on the proposed pad-ready site at the Allegheny Commerce Center. On Tuesday, the Covington City Council gave the Clifton Ford Shrine Club a very nice vendor trailer and thanked the organization for its service. Lewis Gale Hospital CEO Lee Higginbotham updated the Clifton Ford Town Council on a number of items on Tuesday night. He also noted that 100% of COVID-19 patients in the hospital were from unvaccinated individuals. Street Scene 43 is going on right now in the city of Covington, one of the best car show events in the Eastern United States, with thousands of people from around the region in attendance. On Monday, August 16th, Suzanne Yunkin will be at the historic Masonic Theater in Clifton Forge to greet the public. A big crowd is expected to show up to meet the wife of the Republican candidate for governor of Virginia. On Sunday, August 15th at 3.30 p.m., the Masonic Amphitheater will be the scene of a back-to-school prayer bash sponsored by the Eastern Allegheny Christian Ministerial Association. Several ministers will be praying for all educators, students, and related personnel. And thanks for joining us today for our 77th show in this series. With more than 13,433 Facebook followers now, your readership is very much appreciated. See you right here again next week.